Welcome back to Highlander Gymnasium. We're just about four minutes away from the start of boys' action tonight. Scott High and Halls getting set to go at it. Halls won this game in an upset. The first time that they met over in Knoxville back on December the 3rd, they won that game uh, by a final score of 67-63. to 63. But the final score really did not tell the story of how that game went. Bennett Lane scored 27 points. Caleb Schaefer scored 17 Halls jumped out to a 15-point lead in that one. They were up 13 in the first half. Scott used a big run to get themselves back in it. I think they cut it all the way back to three late in the second quarter. Halls went on a little bit of a run to end the first half, and then they came out on fire in the second half, got up by as much as 15. Scott put, a, put together a furious rally in the fourth quarter to make a game out of it, but they were just a little bit da too far down with a little bit too little time remaining to be able to pull off the comeback in Halls. Coach Jordan Jeffers was not happy with his team after that game. He questioned, uh, questioned a lot of things about his team. He said that they were entitled. He said that they played spoiled. He was very upset with his basketball team. That game was kind of the start of a little bit of a slide, and maybe a slide is a little bit too strong of a word, but Scott High really did not play particularly well in the month of December after that one. However, they began to get it together at the end of the month. They went up to Oneida won the South Fork Physical Therapy Christmas Tournament. They defeated Powell in the championship game of that tournament. That was a big win. And then they went over to Maryville the following week for a Christmas tournament that might have been a little bit too many games in, in too short a period of time. Coach Jordan Jeffers, I think, if he had it to do over, he would not have scheduled that tournament. Scott didn't play particularly well over there. But they did close it out with a win. And over Kingston, by the way, and anytime Scott High beats Kingston in anything, that's a good thing. And they came back last week and got regular season play started again with a win over Cosby in a game earlier. That was actually earlier this week. They defeated Cosby in a game that was just flat-out domination. If you saw that game Tuesday night here on the IH Sports Network, Scott High took it to Cosby. And so, by all measures, this looks like a Scott High team that has weathered the storm and is ready to go and ready to make a run at a district championship, which is where they expected to be when this season started. And if they're going to do that, they're going to have to get by Halls tonight in this district game. No matter what happens tonight, in all likelihood, these two teams are going to face off again in the semifinals of the district tournament. It could be that the only thing that will make a difference about the, what the outcome of this game is which team wears white and which team wears red when they meet in Anderson County in the district semifinals because with all, each team having already lost to Clinton, they're going to probably be locked into the 2-3 seed. With Scott having also lost to Halls, it would be hard for Scott to get the one seed, even if they're able to beat Clinton when those teams match up again here at home in a couple of weeks. So we're set to go, Scott High and Halls. And it doesn't matter if the game really means anything. As far as seeding, you know Scott High wants to avenge that loss from earlier and try to get this thing back on track. And I think it's back on track. But if there's any doubt, Scott High can erase that tonight if they beat this Halls team because I assure you, Halls meeting Scott High back on December the 3rd was not just a fluke. The Red Devils since then have beaten Powell by double digits. They've beaten Anderson County by 18. This is a good Halls basketball team. We're getting set to meet the starters in this game, and if you're just joining us, I'll take this opportunity to again tell you that if you tuned in hoping to hear Rick Keaton, I'm sorry. Rick is a little bit under the weather tonight. I'm filling in for him. Trust me, I wish that Rick was here as much as you do, but hopefully Rick will be back on Tuesday night. I'll try not to mess up too much in this boys' game, and hopefully we can complete this thing without too many mistakes. The starters are being introduced for Halls. It'll be Caleb Schaefer. It'll be Jake Lane. It'll be Luke Simpson. It'll be Dade Young, and it will be Bennett Lane. I think those will be the five starters for Halls. And for Scott High, of course, their lineup is going to be very similar to what we've seen all season out of this team. They're going to start with that senior-laden backcourt, of course, and Trey Morrow, Luke West, Dalton Pruitt, all three of those guys are seniors. And then the juniors in the starting lineup, Scott Jeffers at the guard position, Gray Todd at the forward position. And those are the five who will be on the floor to start this thing for Scott High as they get set to take on Halls in this all-important district matchup here at Highlander Gymnasium. Scott High comes into tonight's game with an overall record of 11. Uh, check that. Scott High comes in with an overall record of 16 and 5. They're 1 and 2 in district play. Halls comes in with a record of 11 and 5. They are 2 and 1 in district play. With a win tonight, these two teams would be tied for second and third in the district. 
That doesn't matter a whole lot because, as we've already talked about, they're going to probably play each other in the district semifinals anyway. This one's all about getting momentum going into that pivotal third game in another month for Sky High. It's an opportunity to continue to build on what they started at Oneida in the Christmas tournament and what they built on already earlier this week with that big win over Cosby. Jumping into center court, it's going to be great, Todd, for Scott High. It's going to be Bennett Lane for Halls, and we're underway. Scott High wins the tip, and Trey Morrow will control for the Highlanders. Halls is going to come out in a man-to-man -man defense. They use that man defense extremely effective effectively in that first game back on December the 3rd. It's going to be Caleb Schaefer who's tasked with guarding Morrow. Morrow is going to get to the baseline, pull up for two. It's not going to go. The rebound is going to be to Halls. Schaefer was extremely effective guarding Trey Morrow in the first game. Even though Morrow finished with 26, he worked hard to earn every single one of them. As It wasn't just Schaefer. It was anybody that Halls threw at him. They did a good job of guarding Trey Morrow in that first game. Trey Morrow, Mr. Basketball candidate, shutting him down is not an easy task. Halls found out that night you can't shut him down, but you can play good defense on him and make it a struggle and make someone else have to step up in that first game. For Scott High, it was a difficult finding someone else to step up. We'll see if something happens tonight where someone else is able to step up. That could be the difference in this game. Luke West has got it for the Highlanders. It's going to go to Scott Jeffers back to West. West drives, free throw lane, down the paint, layup, good. Luke Jeffers with a nice take, and he finishes with the right hand, and Scott High scores first a minute into the game. Back into front court comes Halls, working against Scott High's man-to-man -man defense. Halls drives, pulls up, shot's not there for Simpson. He's going to go to Young, and Young's going to have his shot blocked out of bounds by Trey Morrow. Trey doing one of the things that he does best on the defensive end, and that is using his athleticism to get up high and deny shots. And so Halls will work the ball in from the baseline. They want to go up high. It's not there. And now Trey extending his arms again. He knocks the ball free. Scott with the steal. And at the other end, it's going to be Luke West, another layup. And Scott High is off to a 4 to nothing lead. And certainly a much better start here tonight than Scott High had over in Knoxville on December the 3rd. Halls in the front court with the basketball. The handoff goes to Simpson. Simpson drives all the way to the hole for the layup good. Simpson got around his man. The help wasn't there, and he's able to get Halls on the board. It's 4-2, to two, and now it's going to be Simpson who's going to guard Morrow as they extend the defense and this man approach. Morrow with it, gives it to Jeffers. Jeffers goes to Morrow on the right side. Morrow wants to drive. It's cut off, so he'll take a three. It's going to be short. It's going to be Jeffers with the rebound. He goes to Pruitt. Pruitt drives, kicks back out. Luke West for three. Bang! Luke West from the top of the key. He's got all seven of Scott High's points, and the Highlanders off to a 7-2 lead over Halls. And at the other end, it's going to be a foul. It's going to be called on Dalton Pruitt. And it looks an awful lot like Dalton Pruitt tied that thing up, but they're going to call him for the foul. Hard to argue. You're not going to get that call very often in that situation. But that was a nice defensive effort by Dalton Pruitt. It's going to put Jake Lane at the free throw line. And his first free throw is good. I thought his first free throw was good. Was his first free throw not good? He was good. Okay. Sam Cron says his free throw was good. His second free throw was good. And it's 7-4, of four, and now it's on the scoreboard. That's Terry on the clock. Jordan Terry's been in retirement for a couple of years. We can cut him a little bit of slack. <laughs> but I am glad it's him down there under the gun instead of me. Trey Morrow with the basketball for Scott High. He tries to drive. It's cut off. He gets back out on top to Gray Todd. Now it goes to Dalton Pruitt. Pruitt wants to drive. Has the ball knocked away from him. Might have been fouled. No whistle. It's going to be a turnover. And Halls is going to have an opportunity to cut it to one or tie. And they're going to dish it into the lane for a nice look from Bennett Lane. And it's good. Seven to six. Halls gets it back to one. So Scott High, a red hot start. But Halls has managed to hang in there. And so far, they're weathering the storm just fine. Morrow's got it. Gets it to West. West is the only person who scored for Scott High. He's going to go to Pruitt. Pruitt's going to put up a look at the three, a little bit short, and the rebound is to Halls. Halls coming back the other way, driving into front court. They'll kick it over to – it's going to be Young. He goes out on top with it. Halls wants to drive. They get it to Simpson. Simpson wants to drive. Gets by Pruitt. Shot won't go. A good look, but it wouldn't go down, and it's going to be Gray Todd with the rebound. Gets it to Pruitt. Pruitt brings it up, gets it to West. Back to Pruitt. Got Morrow working the low block, calling for it. They'll get it down to him. The double team comes. He's going to be almost tied up, but it gets free, and he puts it in. Halls wanted the walk. Scott wanted the foul. Morrow just takes the two points. It's 9-6 to six as Trey hits his first shot of the night. Scott high up by three. 
At the other end, they're going to get it down low to Lane. Lane back out on top for three. No good, but a foul is going to be called on Trey Morrow on the follow through. And that's going to put Dade Young at the free throw line for, free, for three tosses. And he'll have an opportunity to tie this game with 4.13 to play in the first quarter. Dade Young, his first shot is good. It's a 9-7 game, 4.13 to play. We're midway through this opening quarter. So far, these two teams pretty much neck and neck, which is, which is exactly what we expected to see. Second free throw by Young is a little bit short, and he'll have an opportunity to cut it to one with his third free throw. Young leaves another one short. Marl's got the rebound. Scott High will work the ball up with a two-point lead. Morrow is going to work on Simpson. Kicks out to West. West for three, a little bit off the mark this time, and it's going to be the rebound will go to the floor, and then Young will come up with it. In the front court, it's going to be Halls. Wasting no time, getting it into the lane. Spinning shot up. Good. Bennett Lane ties the game. He's got four, and it's nine to nine. Now Morrow will work the ball up slowly for Scott High. Simpson comes out high to meet him. Halls still working in a man-to-man -man defense. Here's Morrow working on the right side. He's going to get the ball to Gray Todd. Todd wants to drive. He pulls up, dishes to Morrow, down the lane, layup, good. And Scott High will take a timeout. Jordan Jeffers wants a 30. We'll take a 30 as well. With 3.31 to play in the first quarter, it's Scott High 11, Halls 9, as you listen to Highlander basketball on the IH Sports Network. We're five and a half minutes in. Scott High out to an 11-9 lead on Halls in this District 4 3A matchup at Highlander Gymnasium. It's 11 to 9. The Highlanders started strong. Luke West has got seven already. Trey Marl's got four. So the people you expect to do the work for Scott High so far, they're doing the work. Halls is going to bring the ball up, and they're going to get it to Young. Young loses the handle, tracks it down, being guarded very closely by Morrow, and now Morrow picks his pocket. Morrow back the other way, layup, good, and he's fouled. Dade Young, maybe some frustration after Morrow picked his pocket. He tried to catch up and get the stop from behind. That was not a wise choice. You're probably not going to stop Morrow once he's got a step on you, and Young couldn't stop him. Instead, he gets the foul. That'll be his first, and Morrow will go to the line with an opportunity to complete the three-point play. Free throw's good. Morrow's got seven. Luke West has got seven. Scott High's got 14, and the Highlanders lead Halls by five. Back in the front court with it is Lane. He's going to get it to Simpson. Simpson working against West. Simpson wants to drive. It's not there. He pulls up, picks up his dribble, looking to dump the ball inside. He does, and the turnaround shot off the glass is good. Caden Stanton into the game, gets his first bucket, and he'll lead into the lead a bit as it's now 14-11. to 11. Scott High with a three-point advantage over Halls. Marlowe's got it, gets it over to Pruitt. Pruitt lays down the dribble, wants to... Work with the basketball, works off of one pick, works off of two picks. Now he's going to get it to Brumman, who's into the game. Out top to Gray Todd. He wants a three. Good. Gray Todd from the top of the key. He likes that spot and a little comfortable with it there. His first points, and Scott High now with its biggest lead of the night at 17 to 11. With the basketball, Halls drives, kicks outside. They're going to take a three. The three is no good. Rebound is going to be Todd. He's fouled. That's absolutely a foul as Todd goes to the deck. It's not whistled. And at the other end, it's going to be Morrow, and they'll call him on. Let's see. It's going to be a blocking foul. I was certain that they were probably going to call Morrow for the charge, and that's absolutely what Halls wanted them to call. But I think block is probably the correct call on that one. And so Scott High will have the basketball under their basket. Luke Simpson has his first. That's the second team foul on Halls. Ball comes in tomorrow on the baseline. Morrow trying to back his man down, gives it to Pruitt. Down the line, Pruitt, layup is good, and he's fouled. Dalton Pruitt, another end one for the Highlanders. A nice dish from Morrow. He commands so much attention that Halls did not see him with the double team, did not see Pruitt with the double team on Morrow, and Pruitt slides in for the two, and he'll try to complete the three-point play to give his team a nine-point lead. That foul was caught on Caden Stanton. That's his first. Pruitt hits the free throw, and a nice start for the Highlanders. They are up 20 to 11. Scott High is on the pace to hit 100 right now. 
which is a long, long way from the pace they were on at any point in that first meeting. Over at Halls, and here on the other end, we're going to have a block by Gray Todd. Morrow comes up with the loose ball. Scott High can get it to double digits if they can score here as we go under two to play in the first quarter. It's going to be Brummett with it outside to Pruitt. He gets it to West. West thinks about the three. Instead, he lays down the dribble, goes back to Brummett. Scott High is going to work the ball around. Now Pruitt lays down the dribble, goes into the paint, got into some trouble as he went into the air, and it's going to be a turnover. And then Pruitt's going to compound things a little bit by picking up a foul in rear court. And that will be his first. And he'll check out of the game as Scott Jeffers reenters for the Highlanders in a 20-11 game with 1.41 to play in the first quarter. Hall's going to try to eat into this lead a little bit. And driving, we're going to have an illegal pick. is going to be caught on Hall's. An illegal pick and a turnover as it's going to be Caleb Schaefer called for his first. That's the fourth team foul. If you remember, if you watched when this first game was played at Halls, it was a very physical, very aggressive game against officials from our association. So it was against officials Scott was used to, but they let a lot of stuff go. Scott didn't necessarily handle it well at times in that they just couldn't adjust to it. And so far, this game here tonight is being called much tighter. Halls is getting really frustrated by that. Ball is loose on the floor, but it's going to be Jeffers saving it to Todd. He's going to get it to Luke West, and Scott High will go back to work offensively. There's a feed down the lane. Gray Todd, shot's no good, but a foul. And I mentioned back to what I was talking about. Halls, is ab- they are visibly frustrated. The fans are frustrated, but more importantly, Every player on the hall, all, every player on the floor for Halls is frustrated. There's a lot of head shaking going on, uh, just a lot of visible frustration every time a foul is called. And that's got Halls off their game a little bit so far. As the second foul has just been called on Stanton, that puts Gray Todd at the line. His first free throw is good. And by the way, they're good calls. It's just a difference in the way the game is being called. It was called extremely loose at Halls, and it's being called tight here tonight. You never know what you're going to get from one night to the next. First free throw by Gray Todd gives his team a double-digit lead. He'll hit the second one as well. And Scott High is up 22 to 11. Substitution for the Highlanders. They're going to get Caleb Pruitt into the game. He'll replace Todd. Halls with the basketball, working it up. They get into the air. It looked like he wanted the three. Instead, he's going to dump it off, and it's going to be to Simpson. And Simpson gets into some trouble on the baseline. The ball was out of bounds. It's going to be touched last by Scott High. So Halls will maintain possession with 36 seconds to play in this opening quarter. Scott High up 22 to 11. The inbounds comes to Lane. Lane loses it momentarily, gets it back. Gets it to Simpson. He loses it. Still loose. It's going to be Brummett. He gets it tomorrow. Ahead to West. West has it knocked away, and a foul is going to be called, and that's not going to go over well. Hall's fans not happy with that call. That's going to be six fouls on the Red Devils as a team, and that's going to put Luke West at the free throw line. And to be honest, it looked like a pretty clean play, but I'm a lot further away from the ball than the official is. So Luke West steps to the line for two free throws, the first of which is good. And West has eight as Todd quickly back into the game. He's going to replace Morrow, and Coach Jeffers will use this opportunity to get Trey Morrow a quick break here at the end of the first quarter. The second free throw is up, and it's also good. Scott High, as a team, off to a fantastic start from the free throw line. They are six of six so far, and they lead 24 to 11. Halls with the basketball at the other end. A quick quick three from the right corner is up and no good by Caleb Schaefer. West has got the rebound. Scott will likely hold for the final shot as we go down to 10 seconds to play. West wants to drive. Cut off. He works off a screen. Pulls up for three. No good. Rebound goes to the floor. Halls comes up with it. Two seconds on the clock. Halls back the other way. They'll put up a long look. No good off the backboard. And the first quarter comes to a close. It's an outstanding first quarter for Scott High. The Highlanders struggled against Halls the first time. No struggles so far tonight. After one, the Highlanders lead the Red Devils 24-11. to Back at Highlander Gymnasium, Scott High off to a fantastic start against Halls as they try to complete the sweep of the Red Devils here tonight. The girls already won. Scott High up 24 to 11 after one. And we get the second quarter started with Halls in possession of the basketball. Three-point shot is up by Schaefer, and it's way short. 
Scott with the rebound, and the Highlanders will have an opportunity to extend their lead. In that first quarter, it was a whole lot of Luke West, a whole lot of Trey Morrow, and a whole lot of Gray Todd on the offensive end. Here's Luke Jeffers up and no good. Gray Todd with an outstanding offensive rebound. He's surrounded by three people, tries to go back up with it. Shot is knocked away, blocked, and Halls comes up with the basketball. Lane's got it on the other end. Turnaround shot in the paint is good. Nice shot by Bennett Lane. He's got six, and Halls has cut it to 11, 24 to 13. And the first time around, the post players for Halls had outstanding games. Bennett Lane had 27 himself in that one. Here's Trey Morrow for three. Good. Speaking of outstanding games, Trey Morrow, he's got 10. And Scott High with a 27 to 13 lead. At the other end, a traveling violation is going to be called on Dade Young. He did a nice job of getting Trey Morrow into the air. It's not easy to fake out Trey Morrow, and apparently the reason Dade Young was able to do it is because Trey Morrow knew he'd already used that pivot foot because he called for the traveling violation, and Scott High will have an opportunity to grow their lead a little bit more. Luke West has got it in the front court. He gets it to Scott Jeffers. Jeffers looks. Continues to work. He'll get it to Braden Brumman on the left wing. Out top it goes to Todd. Todd wants to drive. Pull up in the paint. Shot won't go down. Fighting for the rebound. Morrow got a hand on it. Halls is going to come out of there with it, however. And the Red Devils quickly back the other way. In the front court, it's going to be Simpson. He drives. Shot's good. And he's fouled. Foul will be caught on Luke West. That'll be his first. That's the fourth team foul. And that's going to put Luke Simpson at the line for an opportunity to complete the three-point play. He's got four. Simpson's free throw is on the way and no good. Gray Todd with another rebound. Gray Todd has been a boss on the board so far tonight. 6.15 to go. First half, Scott High up double digits. But you got to think we probably have not heard the last from Halls. Just as when Halls had the big lead in the first game, we knew we hadn't heard the last from Scott High. These are two very evenly matched basketball teams. With the basketball, it's going to be Luke West. Nearly lost it. Regains his dribble. Gets it to Brummett. Brummett spins around his defender. He drives. He tries to kick it out to Todd, but it's going to be knocked free. With the turnover the other way, shot's going to be good. And another foul. This one's caught on Gray Todd as he stood in there to try to take the charge. And that's going to be for Todd, his first foul. And it's going to put for Halls at the free throw line. It's going to be Caleb Schaefer with an opportunity to complete a three-point play as Halls has cut this lead back to 10. Dalton Pruitt re-entering the lineup as he replaces Scott Jeffers. Schaefer stands in at the free throw line. The the free throw is good, and it's a nine-point game. Now Hall's extending the defense, and that leaves Braden Brummett wide open at the other end. His shot's blocked away, but coming up with the rebound is going to be Dalton Pruitt. He lays it up and in. Dalton Pruitt with a nice job of recovering on that one. He's got five, and for Scott High, it's back to a double-digit lead, 29-18. Five and a half to play here at the other end. It's going to be spinning for the shot. Lane, no good. Scott High with the rebound. Bringing it up. Pruitt kicks it ahead to Luke West. Luke West looks. He's got Todd posting up inside. Instead, he's going to opt to go back out on top, and he'll get the ball around to Pruitt. Now it goes to Morrow. Morrow drives. Morrow pulls up. Gets it outside to Pruitt. Dalton Pruitt for three. Bang! Dalton Pruitt having himself a second quarter. He's got five in the quarter. He's got eight on the night, and Scott High with a 32-18 lead. On the other end, Halls gets inside, blows an easy layup, gets a rebound, back up good, and a foul. That's Caleb Schaefer. He didn't give up after he missed an easy one. He collects the rebound, and he is back to the line, the third and one for Halls in this second quarter as the foul for Scott High is going to be called on Braden Brummett, and that will be his first. That's going to be the sixth team foul. And so after Halls had six first quarter fouls, the things have evened up, both teams with 16 fouls as we hit the five-minute mark of this second quarter. And for Caleb Schaefer, he had 17 points the last time these two teams played. He did not score in the first quarter, but now he's got six in the second, and he cuts it back to 11, 32 to 21. Pruitt with the basketball in the front court for the Highlanders. He's going to go to Luke West on the left side. 
West wants to go back to Pruitt. Ill-advised pass is going to be stolen. And Halls is going to get the easy layup at the other end as it's going to be Ben Thomas getting in for his first two points. And Scott High wants a timeout. 4.35 to play in the second quarter. Halls has got it back to single digits. It's 32-23 to as you listen to Scott High basketball on the IH Sports Network. Halls was down 14. They've cut it to nine with 4.35 to play in the first half. It's 32 to 23. The Red Devils trying to get themselves back into it by doing a nice job of getting to the rim and getting to the free throw line. They've got three and ones in this second quarter. Caleb Schaefer has come alive. He's got six points twice getting to the free throw line on made buckets. And Halls is on a little bit of a run right now off of that steal and basket. Coach Jordan Jeffers had seen all that he wanted to see as he takes a timeout to try to get his team's composure back. Halls extending the defense. It comes into Pruitt. They're going to double team him. He goes ahead to Morrow. Scott High breaks the pressure. Halls does a nice job recovering. Here, though, is going to be Gray Todd with a free throw line jump shot. That's good. Gray Todd has had a nice game tonight. He's got seven, and it's 34 to 23. Halls has it on the other end. It's going to be with the basketball working. Ben Thomas. Thomas goes into Morrow. Has his shot blocked by Morrow, and Scott High with the basketball. Ben Thomas was not afraid of Morrow, but maybe he should have been just a little bit afraid because Morrow took it away from him, and now Scott High with the basketball on the other end. Morrow's got it, gets it to Pruitt. Now back to Morrow. Morrow wants to drive. It's cut off. He'll go to work back out on top to Luke West. West has a pick, goes the other way. Cut off again, back out on top to Pruitt. Scott High going to be very patient with the basketball now as we're inside four minutes to play in this first half. Pruitt's got it. He's going to work off a pick from Morrow. Wants to get it back to Morrow on the give and go. He does. Morrow turns, spins in the paint, shot rattles, won't fall, and the rebound is grabbed by Halls. Another opportunity for the Red Devils to get it to nine, and at the other end, the ball is going to be to Lane. He's got the look. He's got the shot, and Bennett Lane has got eight points. He's got Halls back to within single digits at 34 to 25. These post players from Halls, the first time around, they teamed up for 44 points tonight. They're having another nice game. And now Trey Morrow is going to lose the basketball. It's going to be Kaysen Rogers who's going to pick it up. And at the other end, the ball is going to go out of bounds, touched last apparently by Dalton Pruitt. Rogers will check out of the game for the Highlanders, or for the Red Devils as Luke Simpson returns. And for Scott High, back into the game is going to be Caleb Woodward and Dominic, uh, <laughs> Dominic Bremen. Holy cow. I told you I was going to mess up, but that's a pretty big one. I don't think Dominic's out there tonight. Brayton Brummett on the floor for the Highlanders. If I'd have called him Dustin, that would have been understandable. Three-point shot is up and no good for Halls. Rebound by Morrow. Here comes Scott High back the other way. Luke West has got it. Scott off to such a great start offensively. They've cooled off considerably, and a lot of that is the defense of Halls. They have stepped up the pressure tremendously. Now here's Morrow with a long three off the back of the iron. And here comes Halls. Back the other way quickly with it. The dump inside. They'll go to work on Woodward. But Morrow comes in and another steal for Trey Morrow. Morrow has affected several turnovers here already tonight in this first half. And he's got another one here. Scott High will try to get this game back to double digits. Pruitt's got it. Scott High runs the pick and roll, but it's not there as Brumman is taken away. So they go to West. Now he works off a pick by Caleb Woodward. West goes all the way home for the shot. No good. Halls with the rebound. It's going to be... Simpson picks it out of the air. Simpson coming the other way. Simpson wants to take it all the way himself, but he's got Ben Thomas out on the wing for three. It's an air ball. Good look. Wouldn't go. Caleb Caleb Woodward with the rebound gets it off to Dalton Pruitt, and Scott High will go back to work as we hit the two-minute mark of the first quarter. First half, I should say. Luke West had it. Has it. Gets it tomorrow. To Woodward, he's working on the low block. Shot's no good. Battling for the rebound. Woodward keeps it alive, but now he has it taken away from him as it's Bennett Lane coming in and getting the takeaway. And at the other end, Halls throws the ball away, trying to save it, and they cannot because Dalton Pruitt comes up with a loose ball. A little bit of out-of-control basketball. Now here's Pruitt giving it to Morrow for the layup good. Trey Morrow gets to the rim off a nice feed from Dalton Pruitt, and finally Scott High breaks his scoring drought, and Halls will take a timeout. 1.22 to play in the first half. Your score is Scott High 36, Halls 25, as you listen to Scott High basketball on the IH Sports Network. Back at Highlander Gymnasium, 1.22 to play in the first half. Scott High leading Halls 36-25. The 
Highlanders jumped out to a 7-2 lead, and they have led throughout. Hall's got it as close to one point. Uh, got it as close as one point in that first quarter. Sky High is led by as much as 14, and the Highlanders now just trying to close this thing out before we get to halftime. Keep the lead that they've got. And here is going to be, as we resume play, a steal by Morrow. Trey Morrow is having quite a defensive game for Scott High to go along with his 12 points. And Morrow brings the ball up, hands it off to Dalton Pruitt. Scott High will go to work. They try to get it to West. It's going to be knocked away by Halls. West is able to recover momentarily, but then he stepped out of bounds with it. So it's going to be Halls basketball. Still down 11 as we go under a minute to play in the first half. And now Scott Jeffers will come into the game for the Highlanders, and he's going to replace Dalton Pruitt. Gray Todd is also back out on the floor for Scott High. 36 to 25, Halls with the basketball. Running some motion offense. The entry pass is not there, so Scott will work, Halls will work around the perimeter. Now they go to Schaefer for a tough look, won't go. They get their own rebound, though, and it's going to be with the basketball driving Simpson. He's cut off, he kicks it out, and now it's going to be Lane who wants to drive. And we're going to have a foul that's going to be caught on Scott High. It's on the floor, but that is the seventh team foul on the Highlanders, and so that's going to put Jake Lane at the free throw line for one and one. Foul is going to be caught on Scott Jeffers. That'll be his first. And the free throw by Lane is good. So Jake Lane will have the second opportunity as he gets it back to a 10-point game, 36-26. to Second free throw by Lane is up and good as well. And this Halls team does not miss many free throws. Neither of these two teams have missed many free throws tonight. Neither of the girls' teams missed many free throws tonight. It's been a good night shooting night from the free throw line for everyone involved. And Scott High leads it by 9, 36 to 27, as we hit the final 20 seconds of the first half. Broman's got it. Hands the ball off to Jeffers. It goes to Todd. Fakes the three, now gives it to West. West will take a three. It's going to be no good, but there's Trey Morrow getting the rebound back up. It won't go. Morrow's guys in, ties the ball up, and the possession arrow will go to Scott High. So the Highlanders get an extra possession on the effort of Gray Todd, who gets in to tie that thing up, and it's going to be Trey Morrow working the ball in from the baseline with 6.3 seconds to play in the first half. He wants to hit Luke West. Instead, he goes out on top to Gray Todd. Todd gives it to West. West looks at the clock. Now lobs it inside tomorrow. His shot's blocked. Gets it back. Back up. No good. And that's the way the first half's going to end. At halftime, our score as we step aside for a two-minute break. It's Scott High 36 and Halls 27. You're listening to Scott High Basketball on the IH Sports Network. Welcome back to Scott High School, where at halftime it is Scott High leading the Halls Red Devils by a score of 36 to 27. Let's look at our first half scoring real quickly before we get Jake Ride in here to talk about the girls game a little bit earlier. For Halls, leading the way in the first half, Bennett Lane had eight points. It was Caleb Schaefer with six points, four points for Jake Lane and for Luke Simpson, two points for Ben Thomas, two points also for Caden Stanton, and one point for Dade Young. And for Scott High, leading the way in the first half was Trey Morrow with 12. It was Luke West with nine, eight for Dalton Pruitt, and seven for Gray Todd in that first half. Playing tonight but not scoring so far, Scott Jeffers and Caleb Woodward both played and did not score for the Highlanders in that first half, and also Braden Brunett played and did not score in the first half. We're joined now by Scott High Lady Highlander coach Jake Wright, and Coach Wright, your team with the win tonight, 41-27. to That's a huge win because that means you're not going to finish any worse than third, third yes, in the district, which means you avoid Clinton yes, in that district semifinal game. Yes, That's sir. big. Yes, sir. Now, let's talk about the game. For three quarters tonight, <laughs> it was just – it was a kind of – basketball that your team does best. Oh, Blue ugly. collar, scrappy ugly. basketball. Well, <laughs> you say ugly, but the defense was awfully yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. But then in that fourth quarter, Jalen Young did something that I know you've wanted several of your players to do all season, and they've been a little bit reluctant to do yeah. to do it. But Jalen Young in the fourth quarter, first of all, she did it on defense. She was a spark on defense. Yes, but then sir. on offense, she put the team on her shoulders. She started driving the ball, and that got her to the line several times. She had a 18 points, yes. career high for her. Oh. Talk about the play of Jalen. Oh, it, it was just so impressive to watch her grow up tonight. I mean, you know, at halftime, I, I, I talked to her and Brittany, and I said, listen, you two, you got to go to the rim. We got to attack. If we can get you guys knifing to the basket, we got an opportunity to blow this thing out and give us a little cushion. And, you know, for her, she just she took it. She was smart with it. She, You know what? 
at times there's always a question, but tonight I didn't question a single thing she did. Every, every move she made, I thought it was the right move, and it was very impressive to see that growth in her. And I was, I was really proud of her. And, you know, she made some tough plays because she got fouled a bunch of times hard. She took one to the eye um, that I thought it was rougher than it was, you know. just And just, made both free throws. And made both free throws. I mean, um, you know, for us tonight, 14 of 18 is what we had for the free throw line. That's the best percentage with that many we've shot in a long, long time. And it, I mean, that's just how you win tough games. That's how you, that's how you get your distance in these games where you're just, you know, gritting it out. And, um, you know, I think I played 10 tonight, and I think that was the difference. Every person that got in that game made a difference because by the end of it, they were huffing and puffing. They were out of gas. We, we had a little bit left in the tank. Jalen Young, let's talk about the, the free throws. You talked about your team being 14 of 18. She was 12 of 14. Yes, this is a kid that last year as a sophomore would not have been able to step out there and knock down 12 of 14. But she's turned into the player a few ga- maybe the first game against Halls, I think it was. Yes, you sir. put her out there on the line in a technical situation. You let her take those free throws. Yes, sir. You've got confidence in her. What has changed with her ability to knock those down? I think, I think it's just the confidence within herself. Um, you know, she's just – She's understanding the role of the team that the team needs her to be. And, you know, right now we need her production on the offensive end. We need her knifing to the basket. We need her getting to the line. And, um, you know, she's just embracing it. And the team was rallying behind her. The team was loving it. I mean, I'm so proud of my bench tonight because they were hooping and hollering. I, you know, at times I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're going to get a tech here or we're going to get a bench warning. But, you know, for me, I'd have been okay with it tonight because, I mean, they were just – they were all for each other. All 14 dressed tonight were all for each other. And then coming out of the game, I, I love having a text from Melanie Spradlin, Zoe Terry, and Annaline Woodward saying how proud they are of them. I mean, this team is just – just coming together more and more. And it, it is awesome to watch. It's awesome to see how they love each other and fight for each other. Um, because the last two games, they fought as hard as they could. And it, it's been impressive. You, before Christmas, at the start of December, you beat Halls. And then you come home and you beat South Dole. And at yes, that sir. point, I think a lot of us felt, I know I felt like, that you were going to exceed last year's win total mm-hmm. by the time you hit Christmas. Oh, yeah. Then you go on an eight-game losing streak. Yes, Had some games you should have won. But yes, your team just couldn't get over the hump. And all of us, when I say us, I mean us folks sitting in the stands and watching mm-hmm. the games, we kept saying it's going to click. Oh, At yes. some point, it's going to click. So after the game against Cosby, and by the way, people, some maybe they take Cosby for granted because they're a single-A team. That's a traditionally strong yes, Cosby program. Yes, and they're, they're young, but that was a huge win. I don't think, it, as a non-region win, I don't think you can overstate that win on, yes, on Monday night. And then you come back tonight and get the win. Do you think it's clicked? I- how do you build off the momentum? Oh, we just we like I told them, we're just gonna come back to work Monday. Hopefully that snow stays away for a little bit. Um, <laughs> as a teacher, it kills me to say it, but as a coach, my goodness, we need it. Um, you know, I just I've been very happy with the practices we've had. We went on that eight game, that eight game just horrible stretch. We didn't practice well in it. We we we, we were sluggish and everything we did. We just struggled. Um, and, and, you know, as we just – when we came back, we just slowly started working, getting better, understanding the ifs and the ands about everything, um, learning across our T's and dot our I's in practice. And when you learn it in practice, it slowly transitions to the game. And, um, you know, like tonight, we were able to hit the free throws at the end to stretch it out and win the game. So, I mean, it's – some things are finally starting to click. Defensively, it's clicking right now. We – we were able to throw a, a one three one at them for a stretch. We were able to go our power, our three two. We get, went money, our man, a couple of times. This is the first. Last year we couldn't go multiple defenses. This year we've done a great job being able to switch it in spurts, um, throw different looks at them. And, it, and for me, that's I love defense. I love it. I love it. I love it. And um, we, we're just playing it at such an aggressive pace right now, and I love that. And for us, it allows us to make some easy buckets on the other end. And and as we go on, we're going to have to continue to hit to defend like banshees and get those tips, get those loose balls, and go and lay it in for 94 feet. And your team has – defense has to be at the center of everything that they Absolutely. do because you're not a team that's going to go out and outscore anybody yes, if sir. it becomes a shooting contest. Let's talk about – obviously, you're without Annaline Woodward, and there's nothing you can do about that. She's yes, torn her ACL. She's not going to be back this year. Yes, sir. But also tonight, you're without Zoe – Terry, who yes. is another, she has become, even though she was coming off the bench a lot early in the season, yeah. she's another one of your leading 
production people, especially on offense, but on defense too, yes. one of the best rebounders. So tonight you're down two starters, and you still come out and you take it two halls. But talk about the way that your team has stepped up, kids. That and you, and you mentioned the number of players that you played, and you've got Gracie Lewis coming to the game for what might have been her first varsity yes, minutes sir. tonight, and she was able to give you a couple. Talk about the kids that are stepping oh, up. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, you know, in practice this week, I just I, when we found out Zoe was going to miss this game, I challenged him. I said, "You guys got to step up because I'm going to throw you out there whether you're ready or not." And you know, for us, um, you know, like Caitlin Butts, Riley Price, Gracie Lewis, uh, in, invaluable minutes right there. I mean, they. They came in two, three minutes right there, and what it did was it got us a rest for them others, and those others looked a lot fresher at the end of the game than Halls did. And that, that's the thing that we got to continue to grow because, like I told them at the beginning of the year, guys, if you're going, if you're going to work your tail off, I'll find a way to get you in the game. I'm, I'm more than happy to play 10, 11 kids. If you're playing your butt off that much that you're exhausted and you need a break, I'll, I'd love to get you in. So I think they really embraced that role tonight. All right, Coach Jake Wright, congratulations on a big district win. We'll see you at Gibbs on Tuesday. Good luck yes, in that one. Thank you. All right, back to action here at Scott High. It's going to be Halls basketball as we get the third quarter underway. The Red Devils trailing the Highlanders 36-27 to as the halftime score as the Halls team will go to work against Scott High's man-to-man -man defense. It's going to be with the basketball, losing it momentarily, but then getting it back is Simpson. He gets it to Lane. Lane turns around, and he sinks it. Bennett Lane, you can't say enough about the way he's able to find ways to put the ball in the hole. He's got 10, and all of a sudden, it is a seven-point basketball game. Scott High led by as much as 14. At the other end, it's going to be Luke West. He's going to put up a three, and he's going to drill it. Luke West off the feed from Scott Jeffers. And it puts it back to a 10-point game, 39-29. to 29. And then at the other end, we're going to have a foul as Caleb Schaefer tries to get inside. Scott will send him to the line for a pair of free throws as the foul is going to be called on Scott Jeffers, and that's going to be his second. The first free throw is up and good by Caleb Schaefer. I talked about Sam Cron on the board over here beside of me, and he's doing a good job. And Cameron Parker on the camera, and he's doing a good job as both free throws are good. I don't think we've missed – I don't think we've mentioned Greg Bond, who's back at Studio Central, we'll say, just like he always is every night. He brings the wizardry that makes this thing work for both our broadcast and for Oneida's broadcasts, and he never fails to feed us information as the game goes along to give us some tips, and he also likes to give us a hard time. And I, I, don't, I say us. I'm not sure he gives Rick Heaton a hard time, but he gives me a hard time. I wonder why that is. Shot by Gray Todd is up and no good. And at the other end, a three-point shot is up and good by Jake Lane. And so I said earlier, we have not seen the last of this Halls team. And just like that, they are right back in it. It is a five-point game, 39-34. to 34. Halls has battled back from 14 down to cut it to five. Scott Jeffers has got it, gets it out to Luke West. West drives free throw line now outside Pruitt for three, no good. And the rebound will be out of bounds and as a go over to Halls as Simpson lets it go out of bounds on the baseline. So, so Halls is going to have an opportunity to cut this thing to three or even to two. And we've still got six minutes to play in the third quarter. With the basketball, it's going to be Schaefer and He's going to be called for a charge. And he doesn't like it, and he better be careful. Caleb Schaefer called for the charge. Credit Scott, was that Scott Jeffers or Dalton Brewitt that stood in there and took it? I think that was Jeffers who stood in and took it. And that'll be the first foul, or second foul on Schaefer. It'll be the first team foul of the second half for Halls. So the Highlanders off the turnover with the basketball, and it's going to be Trey Morrow with it on the left wing. Marl drives, spins, tough shot of the paint. It rattles, it won't fall. There's Gray Todd. He goes back up. His shot's going to be knocked away. And Halls has got the rebound, but they stepped on the baseline. So it'll be Highlander basketball under their basket. And it's going to be Dalton Pruitt with it. Pruitt gives it to Todd. Todd looks, wants to go inside tomorrow. It's not there, taken away by Hall, so he'll go to Pruitt. Now to Todd in the corner. He'll put up a three. It's too strong, and it's going to go out of bounds off the leg of the Hall's defender. 
that was Jake Lane who didn't know the rebound was coming. He had his back turned, and so it's going to stay with Scott High. And this Highlander defense, we talked early, late in that first quarter, they were on pace for 100, and they're yet to hit 40. They have really cooled off, and again, it's mostly because of the Hall's defense. They are really taking away the looks that Scott High was getting early. Luke West has it, gets it to Trey Morrow, top of the key. Morrow goes behind the back. Morrow spins. Morrow still got it. Morrow still driving. Morrow scores, and he's fouled. Trey Morrow would not give up, would not be denied. He gets to the hole, and he'll go to the free throw line as they're going to call the foul on Luke Simpson. That's going to be his second, and Morrow with points number 13 and 14 on the night, and he'll stand in there to try to get number 15 with his team up seven with 5.05 to play in the third. The free throw was good. Morrow was two of two from the line tonight. It's almost unbelievable that he's only been to the free throw line twice. Halls with the basketball. Jake Lane's got it, feeds it to Schaefer. Outside it goes to Dade Young. He buries a three, and Halls is able to answer. Point for point. It's right back to five again, 42 to 37. At the other end, West. Halls gambles. West almost had a lane. Halls is there with the help defense, and so Scott High will have to set up the offense again as West dribbles it out high. Now gets it to Pruitt on the right wing. Now tomorrow. Morrow goes to work. Morrow pulls up for three. He buried it. Trey Morrow from the top of the key. Another three points for Morrow. He's got 18, and it's 45 to 37. As we approach the four-minute mark of the first half, now does Halls have another answer? Driving with it is going to be Simpson. His shot's going to be knocked away. With the basketball, it's going to be Scott High momentarily, and then the ball's going to be lost. And we're never going to have actually a foul is going to be called. And it's going to be called on Gray Todd. Todd called for his second foul. That's going to be the team's second as well. And Do uh, and uh, Braden Brumman's going to come into the game to replace Todd. Scott High with the eight-point lead, 45 to 37. Halls has a shot blocked by Brummett. Brummett with the stuff. He gets it ahead to Luke West. West drives his shot. He's fouled. The foul is going to be called on Jake Lane, and that's going to be his first, team's third, and that's going to put Luke West to the line. He's 2 of 2 tonight, and he'll have an opportunity to stretch this thing back out to a double-digit lead, 45 to 37, and that play started with an outstanding defensive play by Braden Brummett, who had just checked into the game. He got the stuff in the paint, and he kicked the ball ahead to Luke West, and West rattles home the free throw, and that's going to give him 13 tonight as he makes it a nine-point game. In there for the second free throw, Luke West knocks it down as well. He's 4 of 4 from the line. Scott High back up by double digits. 47 to 37 with 3.45 to play. In the third. Here's the give into the paint for the shot up and no good by Schaefer. And now we're going to have a foul that's going to be called on Morrow. And for Morrow, that's going to be his second. It'll be the third team foul. And that's going to put Schaefer at the free throw line where he is 4-4 four four tonight. Both of these two teams knocking down the free throws. Schaefer's first one is no good. And if I jinxed him just a little bit, that's okay. And we're going to have a timeout. Jordan Jeffers is going to take the timeout. It comes with 3.36 to play in the third. Scott High leading Halls, 47-37. Back at Highlander Gymnasium with 3.36 to play in the third quarter. You, you're Scott Highlanders with a 47 to 37 lead on Halls. It has been as much as a 14 point lead. Halls has been as close as five here in the third. It's 10 right now as Scott High refusing to go away. And Halls is gonna try to get this thing back to single digits at the free throw line with Caleb Schaefer as he stands in there for his second. He missed his first and he hits a second. So Schaefer's got nine, and it is a nine-point game, 47 to 38. And Morrow brings the ball into front court for the Highlanders. Scott High uses a pick from Brummett to, or from Jeffers to get Morrow open underneath. He hits the layup, and it's 49 to 38. Nice job by Scott High using the off-ball screen that time to get Morrow open against that man defense. Morrow's got eight in the quarter, and now he's got another rebound. 
as Halls is off the mark. Morrow may want to take it all the way himself. He's cut off. The double team comes, so he gets it out to Jeffers. He's got to look at the three. No good off the back iron. It is Braden Brummett keeping the rebound alive, tapping it outside to Morrow, but then Dalton Pruitt gets a little bit tangled up, loses the control on the ball just a little bit, and that is going to create a turnover as he's going to be called for a traveling violation. So Hall's basketball, they're down 11, and you still got to think that we've not seen the last run tonight from this Hall's team. This is a really good Hall's basketball team. This is a very good Scott High basketball team. And with it, the Devils going to work. Out on the left wing, it's Dade Young, and he gets it over to Caleb Schaefer, and Schaefer buries a three. Schaefer has stepped up in this first or in this third quarter. He was scoreless in the first quarter, but since then he's got 12. He had 17 in the first game between these two teams, and it's an eight-point game, 49-41. to 41. With it is West. Cut off, dribbling with the basketball, sizing up the look. He'll go back out on top to Dalton Pruitt. Now Pruitt back to West. Thought about the three. It's not there. He goes back to Pruitt. Pruitt's going to drive. He's going to kick to Jeffers. Now to Morrow. Morrow is going to be fouled. Halls is wanting a hook, but the foul came first. The defensive foul came first, and it's going to be Dade Young. He's going to be called for his second. That's the fourth team foul on Halls in the second half, and Scott High will work the ball inside front court. That's going to be Morrow to trigger it in for the Highlanders. He's got West that's breaking off of a pick by Pruitt, and now Scott High goes to work. Still using screens to try to free up somebody underneath. They had Brummett as an option. It's taken away. Morrow's taken away. They keep it out on top with West. Now to Brummett. Wants to hit Morrow on the cutter. It's not there. He goes out in the right corner to Jeffers for three. It's short. Battling for the rebound. It's kept alive. It's tomorrow. The layup is good. And once again, you can credit Brayton Brummett with keeping the rebound alive. And Scott High gets two more from Morrow. He's got ten in the quarter. But at the other end, a three-point shot is up and good. I missed that one. And Halls is able to cut it back to seven, 51 to 44. This Halls team absolutely refusing to go away. Here's Brummett with it at the other end. Picks up his dribble, gets it to Morrow. Morrow drives. He'll take it all the way home for the layup. Good. Trey Morrow just finds a way, and he has come alive in this third quarter. It is 53 to 44. At the other end, Morrow taps the ball away. It's off the backboard. Hall's able to keep it alive. They're going to have another look at the three. This one's no good, too strong, as it was Kaysen Rogers that tried it. Pruitt's got the rebound, and here comes Scott High. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Scott High can get it back to double digits. Morrow goes to work on his defender. Morrow drives. Morrow pulls up against the double team. This shot's no good, and it's going to be Halls with the rebound. Under 30 seconds to play, and there's Morrow knocking the ball away. It's another turnover. It's Luke West. He drives to the hole. He scoops it up. He scores, and again, it's the defense of Trey Morrow that gets things started, and Luke West gets on the board. He's got seven in the third. It's 55-44. to 44. And here driving for a shot up. No good. Again, the defense of Trey Morrow affecting that shot by Luke Simpson. Back at the other end, it's going to be Luke West. Bounce pass to Pruitt. His pass is going to be knocked away, and it's going to be out of bounds to Halls with four-tenths of a second to play. And the Red Devils making wholesale substitutions as they're going to get back into the game. Jake Lane, they're going to get Ben Thomas back into the game. They're going to get Caden Stanton back into the game. And with four-tenths of a second to go, really Halls has got no chance here except to tip it. And that's not going to work. Shots up. They're going to say it's going to count. And it almost went. That's a bad call if it had gone. But it didn't go. And so at the end of three, Scott High still with a double-digit lead. They saw Halls cut it as close as five. But they lead it by 11 as we head to the fourth. It's 55-44. to 44. Only two players scoring for Scott High in that third quarter. It was all about Trey Morrow, and it was all about Luke West. Morrow had 12 in the first half. He had 12 in the third quarter alone. He's now got 24 for the night, and Luke West had seven in the third quarter. He's got 16 for the night, and Scott High, more importantly, has the lead in this key district game against Halls. It's 55-44. to We've got eight minutes left to play. Halls coaching staff is having a talk with the official. They haven't liked some of the calls here tonight, but the foul count has been very even. But as we talked about in the first half, it's been called much tighter than it was at Halls in that first game. And to their credit, Halls has adjusted to that. 
and it's not affected their game nearly as much since the first quarter as it was affecting them in that opening period. Trey Morrow with the basketball. Scott running a ton of off-ball screens, trying to free people up against this man defense that Halls is so good at. Now morrow has got it working against his defenders into the paint, dishes it out to Scott Jeffers for three, no good. Rebound tipped and controlled by Halls. Boy, Scott Jeffers is getting a lot of looks out there, and eventually you got to think one of those is going to go down. Now at the other end, the throttle is up and no good by Halls. Casey Rogers, Pruitt had the rebound, but they say he stepped on the baseline, and it's going to be Halls ball underneath. Still an 11-point game, 7.29 to play on a Friday night at Highlander Gymnasium. Inbounds pass. Jeffers goes for it, can't quite get it. Now Halls goes to work. In the quarter, they had a look at the three. They pass it up, and instead they'll go back out on top with it. On the left side, driving the feed into the paint. The shot up by Stanton. That's no good. Stanton gets his own rebound. Halls kicks it outside. Now back in again to Stanton. That's no good. But again, Stanton with the rebound. This time he scores. Caden Stanton with two offensive boards, and he's able to get it back to single digits. He's got four on the night. Trey Morrow with the ball as we go under seven minutes to play. The give and go. It's going to be Morrow back out to dominant. Uh, <laughs> Brayden Brummett for three. That is unacceptable. Three-point shot by Brayden Brummett is no good. I'm unacceptable, not the shot attempt. I'm unacceptable because I can't get the names right. The shot attempt is no good, but Scott High is going to get the rebound. There's going to be a foul called on Halls on the board. The foul was called on Ben Thomas, and that is his first. That's the fifth team foul. Scott High will work the ball in under the basket. It's Brummett. Gets it into Morrow. Jump shot. Good. Trey Morrow does what he does best, and that's knocked down the mid-range jumper. Now at the other end, Halls beats everybody. Nice dish outside for three. It's short. But there again is Stanton with the rebound. This time he can't get the put back to go. Gray Todd's got it. Scott High loses it momentarily, but finally they're able to get out of there with it as it's going to be Braden Brummett coming up with the loose ball. Scott High at the other end. Morrow gets his defender in the air. Now he drives, pulls up against the double team, and it's good. Trey Morrow has simply taken over this basketball game, and Halls will take a timeout. With 6.06 to play, Trey Morrow has given the Highlanders a 13-point lead. It's 59-46 to as you listen to Scott High Basketball on the IH Sports Network. Back at Highlander Gymnasium, Scott High up 13 on Halls, 59-46, to 6.06 to play. I'm Ben Garrett. I'm filling in for Rick Keaton tonight. He's a little bit under the weather, but he's with us. Uh, from home, and he'll be back on Tuesday night when Scott High goes to Gibbs. We'll be there for that broadcast, and uh, Rick has texted me, and he tells me there might be a big announcement coming from that game, and I, I'm afraid to say for sure because I don't know if he's pulling my leg or not, so we'll wait and see. Nevertheless, what we do know is that, that if the snow melts, Scott High will be playing at Gibbs on Tuesday night. And here we've got 6.06 to go, and it's going to be Halls with the basketball. Driving with it. To the free throw line, the pull-up jump shot by Jake Lane is good. He had two big three-pointers in the third quarter, and now he hits a shot in the fourth quarter when his team needs it in a big way. Gets it back to 11, 59 to 48. Scott High with the basketball in the front court. It's going to be Morrow with it, sizes up the defense, gives it to Jeffers on the left wing. Halls has jumped into a zone defense. They've been in man most of the night. They figured it wasn't working. They're going to switch things up a little bit. Pruitt's got it. Gets it to Morrow. Morrow double teamed. Trips up. Gets it out. Somehow the Highlander is able to save it. Jeffers to West. He drives. He scores. Luke West connects. He's got 18. And Scott High leads 61 to 48. At the other end, the ball is going to be knocked away by Morrow. Now there is a wild scramble for it. And Dalton Pruitt is able to save it. Outstanding job by Pruitt. And then Gray Todd's going to be fouled as he goes to the hole. I think they'll say this is on the floor. And it will be the sixth team foul. And it was not on the floor. Gray Todd was in the act of shooting. So Todd is going to go to the free throw line for two free throws. That foul was caught on Caden Stanton. That is his third. The free throw by Todd is up and good. That's his first point of the second half. (laughs) 
Second free throw is good as well. Scott High with the 15 point lead. Hall's drive, shot, good. That's Jake Lane again. Jake Lane with four big points in the fourth quarter, trying to keep his team close. And at the other end, Luke Westbury is a three. Luke West has just given Scott High its biggest lead of the night, 66 to 50. And a turnover at the other end. Trey Morrow comes out of there with it. And now Halls is going to steal it right back. It's, it's going to be driving for the easy layup. Good. It was Caleb Schaefer off the feed from Simpson as Halls had numbers, and they're able to get the uncontested layup to go. It's a 14-point game as we approach the four-minute mark, 66 to 52. Morrow's got it, kicks it outside. It's going to be Pruitt into the paint. Shot by Pruitt won't go. He keeps the rebound alive, but it's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be Halls basketball as the Red Devils are going to get back into the game. Dade Young, also Bennett Lane. It'll be Lane bringing the ball up for Halls. He kicks it over to, to Caleb Lane, uh, Bennett Lane, excuse me. His shot this time won't go, and the rebound is going to be taken by Pruitt. Pruitt up to West, back to Pruitt. Now Todd's got it at the top of the key. Scott High slowing it down there in no hurry, nor should they be. Up 14 with three and a half minutes to play in this district game against the Red Devils. Halls took round one. Scott High trying to take round two. Round three will be in the district semifinals in about a month. Here's Trey Morrow for three. It's short, but there's Gray Todd. Rebounded back up and in. Gray Todd, what a big game he's had tonight. That gives him 11, but his impact has been bigger than that. And at the other end, he's going to be called for a foul as he tried to knock the ball away. And that is going to be for Gray, his third. It'll be the fourth team foul for Scott here in the second half. And Halls will work the ball in from the baseline. Three twelve to play. Scott high up 16. It's going to be Bennett in the corner. Gets it to Young, to Lane for a, th a three-point shot by Simpson's up and no good. Chasing after the basketball, it's going to be Bennett with it. He's going to get it outside for a three-point shot up and good by Dave Young, his second three-pointer of the second half. He's got six in the second half, seven for the game, and he cuts it to 13 with under three to play. Now Pruitt's got the basketball. He goes to West on the left wing. West wants to drive into the paint. Let West now will kick it outside to Pruitt. Scott High will reset. West going to work on his defender. Head fake, and we're going to have a timeout. Jordan Jeffers will take the break with 2.34 to play, and our score is Scott High 68, Halls 55. You're listening to Scott High Basketball on the IA Sports Network. Back at Scott High School, the Highlanders trying to put the finishing touches on what has been a big night for Scott High Basketball against a really large school in Halls. It was a game that the first time around, for the boys at least, it didn't go that well. But this time, Scott High has led from start to finish. They have never trailed in this game. They've led by as much as 16. They're up by 13 now, 68 to 55, and they'll have the basketball. It's going to be Dalton Pruitt to key, key the ball in, 234 to play in the game. Scott High feeds it down low to Morrow. His shot's good, and he's fouled. Trey Morrow had 12 in that third quarter. He's got 30 now for the game. He'll step to the free throw line for an opportunity to complete the three-point play as they're going to call the foul on Ben Thomas, and that's going to be his second. Free throw by Morrow is good. He's got 31. And Scott High's in control. And at the other end, we're going to have a foul. It's going to be called on Dalton Pruitt. And that's going to put Halls at the free throw line with 2.23 to play. Pruitt is called for what will be his second foul. That is the fifth team foul on Scott High. And Jake Lane will step in for the free throws. We talked about the Scott High student section. There weren't many of them over there. They have shown up. I'm not sure about that Sunday best thing. There was only one tie that showed up. That was Clayton Carroll, and he has ditched it. And I don't blame him because it's hot in here tonight. Both free throws by Lane are good. 
And Scott High now working against the full court pressure by Halls, and Halls has created the turnover as coming up with it is Schaefer. Now a three-point shot is up and no good, and the rebound is going to be snagged out of there by Dalton Pruitt. Nice strong rebound by Pruitt, the smallest guy on the floor. He'll get it tomorrow out ahead to West, and Scott High will set it up in front court. That's a 14-point game, so if Halls is going to think about fouling, they're going to have to think about doing it pretty quick. With the basketball is Morrow, working his defender down. He's going to turn. He's going to spin. The defender tries to take a charge. The shot won't go. And coming back the other way with it is going to be Hall. So it's going to be Schaefer. Drives all the way to the hole. Layup won't go. Gray Todd has the rebound, but then it's going to be poked away. And another shot by Schaefer. That one won't go. And now Dalton Pruitt's got another rebound. Pruitt had eight rebounds on Monday night against Cosby. Almost had a double-double in that game. And now he's going to be we're going to have a timeout. Jordan Jeffers is going to take a timeout, and we'll take the same. 125 to play at Highlander Gymnasium. The drama almost gone from this one. The Highlanders in control, 71 to 57. Back at Highlander Gymnasium, the Highlanders leading Hall, 71 to 57, a minute 25 to play. And I said I talked about that Hall, that Scott High student section on Sunday Best Day. That's the theme here at Scott High, and I say Clayton Carroll was the only guy that showed up in a tie, but we got to give Nolan Cotton a shout-out because he's in the sports jacket. I'm not sure I've ever seen Jared Cotton show up at a ball game in a sports jacket before. Luke Bolin in the polo. So some of those guys are well-dressed. They're ready to go to church. Trey Morrow with the basketball. He's ready to go to church. He's done some preaching here tonight. 31 points for him, and now they're going to call in for an offensive foul. Halls has been asking for that all night, and during that last time out, the Halls coach, Clint Sharp, was in the ear of the official, and I guess he finally got his point across because Trey Morrow has just been whistled for his third. So Halls with the basketball, needing something to happen in a hurry. They're going to put up a three-point shot, and it's good. Caleb Schaefer and then Clint Sharp will take another timeout. It is 71 to 60 with 67 seconds left to play. Let's take another break as well as you listen to Scott High Basketball on the IH Sports Network. Back at Highlander Gymnasium, we're in the closing stretches of this one. Scott High leading Hall 71 to 60. Hall's trying to make a game of it here late, and they're going to jump into the press to try to create a turnover. They got it to 11. Can they get it to single digits? They're going to foul Gray Todd, and Todd has been – Perfect from the free throw line tonight. He's 4 of 4. He's got four points in the fourth quarter. He's got 11 points for the game, and he'll step in there again. Foul is called on Jake Lane. That is his second. Eighth team foul on Halls. Scott High's next game will be on Tuesday night when they go on the road. That's a non-district game at Gibbs, but it is a region opponent. Scott High could potentially face Gibbs in the region tournament which they will play in. Scott High, with only four teams in the district, will automatically advance to the region. We already know that. We already know that they're going to play Halls in the district semifinals in what will be a rubber match after these two teams apparently are going to split the regular season games. Halls won at home. Scott High is on the verge of winning at home. The third match will be on a neutral side at Anderson County in mid-February. Scott High now just trying to run this clock out, and Trey Morrow is going to be fouled, and so Morrow will go to the line for one and one. Morrow tonight is three of three from the free throw line. He's got 31. Some folks were saying back in December that Trey Morrow was in a little bit of a slump. I don't know if that's, I don't know how you define slump, but Morrow was getting 25 points and nine or 10 rebounds every night. But if he was in a slump, it's safe to say based on Monday night's game against Cosby and tonight's game against Halls, he's not in a slump anymore because he looks like the Trey Morrow that we were seeing back in November. And that's a Trey Morrow who is almost impossible to stop. He's got 33 tonight, and at the other end, it's going to be Jake Lane. He's got eight in the fourth quarter, and now a turnover. Halls is going to put it up, and it's going to be with the basket Luke Simpson. That's his first points of the second half. That gets it to a 10-point game, and that's going to convince Halls Clint Sharp to say, give me a timeout. So with 35 seconds left, we'll take a timeout as well. It's a full timeout, and our score is Scott High 74, Halls 64. 
Football is fun. Baseball is fun. There may be nothing that is any more fun than a district basketball game when you get a gym full of people that really don't like each other. District foes never like each other. Even if it's a friendly rivalry, it's a rivalry, and you can feel this Scott Hall's rivalry growing. The first time these two teams met, the entire Hall's student section was ejected, which was not fair. They were doing what students do, but for whatever reason, the referee didn't like it. He kicked them out, and tonight they're going at it a little bit with the Hall's section, or the Scott High student section. The Scott High student section is collectively inviting them to look at the scoreboard. And speaking of the scoreboard, Scott High leads Hall 74 to 64, but the Highlanders are going to have a turnover. Fortunately for Scott High, there's only 29.5 seconds to play because they haven't looked sharp in the last couple of minutes of this game. They were up 16. Halls has got it to 10, and they can cut it further right now. They'll get a look at a three, and it's good. Caleb Schaefer knocks it down, and I don't know how many more timeouts that Clint Sharp has got, but he's taken none of them back to Halls Crossroads tonight. It's 74 to 67. We'll take a break. With 23 seconds to go, you're listening to Scott High Basketball on the I-8 Sports Network. Hall's coach Nick Sharp has taken uh, Clint Sharp. I'm sorry, has taken about 100,000 timeouts. His team clawing, scratching, and fighting. Scott High's gotten a little bit of lackadaisical here in the final couple of minutes, and that has enabled Halls to trim this thing from 16 to seven because of the time left on the scoreboard. 23 seconds left. It has never felt like that Halls is actually in jeopardy of making this thing too interesting. However, if they can create a turnover here, look out because all of a sudden Halls cannot miss, and they've cut it from 16 to seven. And the Highlanders get it inbounds tomorrow. I don't know what the fans are complaining about, but then Morrow's going to be fouled at the other end, and he's going to step to the line for two free throws. And that could have easily been a, an intentional foul call on Halls as they wrapped up Trey Morrow, and that's what Coach Sharp is telling his player, uh, Caleb Schaefer, uh, or check that, that was Ben Thomas called for the foul. Nevertheless, Trey Morrow stands in at the line where he has not missed tonight, and he still hasn't. Trey Morrow knocks down the first. That'll give him 34. The second free throw is short. And it's Gray Todd keeping the rebound alive momentarily, but then Halls comes out of there with it. Back the other way they come. They've got to get a shot out quickly. They're going to give it to Lane down the lane. His shot won't go. And it's Dalton Pruitt, again, the smallest guy on the floor getting the board. He'll get it ahead to Gray Todd. And this game is going to go final. Scott High with the win. They lost at Halls, but they come back and they get their revenge at home. The Highlanders with a 75-67 to win over Halls tonight in this all-important district game. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll look at our final scoring tonight and get ready to talk to Coach Jordan Jeffers. You're listening to Scott High Basketball on the I-8 Sports Network. Back at Highlander Gymnasium where Scott High has just completed a 75-67 to win over Halls to even the series on the season with the Red Devils. And this probably puts, I, I think that actually ties Scott High and Halls for second place in district play. That's not what's important because at the end of the day, these two teams are probably going to finish second and third and play again in the semifinals of the district tournament. That will be in Anderson County High School in a, in a few weeks, and it should be a dandy with the winner in all likelihood, barring a major upset, getting to play Clinton in the championship game. And that is exactly where Scott High felt like that they would be at the first of the season. Halls kind of threw a monkey wrench into that a little bit with an upset win back on December the 3rd. But tonight, Scott High showed that they may well be the better team out of these two teams that are actually pretty evenly matched. Tonight, Scott High leads it start to finish. Halls never had the lead. However, Halls had some players that did some damage, and that starts with Caleb Schaefer. He had 20 points tonight, eight of those in the fourth quarter. He had a couple of big three-point shots in the fourth, 18 points for Jake Lane, 10 points for Bennett Lane, but the impressive thing there was Scott High's defense. He had eight in the first half. He only scored two points in the second half. Six points tonight for Luke Simpson, uh, seven points for Dade Young, four points for Caden Stanton, and two points for Ben Thomas tonight to make up Hall's total of 67. For Scott High, it was all about Trey Morrow. He had 34 points. He was 7 of 8 from the free throw line. 21 points tonight for Luke West. 12 points for Gray Todd. And for Scott High tonight, completing the scoring was Dalton Pruitt. He had 8 points. Also playing in this game and not scoring were Scott Jeffers, Brayton Brummett, and also for the Highlanders, playing but not scoring Caleb Woodward tonight as the Highlanders again defeat Halls by a final of 75-67. to 
267. So for Scott High, that improves their season record to 17 and 5. The Highlanders are now just three wins away from hitting that 20 win plateau. They'll have an opportunity to get there with a road trip that's coming up that will take them to first Gibbs on Tuesday night for a region game and then they'll be going up to Cosby here in a couple of weeks and then they're also going to be playing at Anderson County and I don't think those are necessarily in that order I think actually Scott it's Gibbs Anderson County and Cosby in that order and then of course the big one out of those three is next Friday night January the 21st at Anderson County the Highlanders and the Mavericks if the Highlanders want to avoid Clinton in that first round game to secure that they got to take care of the business on the road against Anderson County. We're waiting for Coach Jordan Jeffers to join us, and as we do wait, await his arrival, we'll take another two-minute break, and we'll be back to wrap things up on the IH Sports Network. Back at Scott High School, Highlander Gymnasium, Scott High, the winner tonight against Halls, 75-67, to the final in the boys' game, Scott High also won tonight on the girls' side, 41-27. to That big fourth quarter by Jalen Young with her 18 points. She finished with 18 points, but uh, most of those in the, in the fourth quarter. Uh, as a matter of fact, she had 12 of the 18 in the fourth quarter. Scott High turned a 17-17 to tie after three into a really big district win. So it's been a good night of basketball. For Scott High, they get the line, they get the win tonight by a final of 41 to 27. In the girls' game, 75-67. In the boys' game, Jordan Terry is down on the floor, and he just told me that he's coming out of retirement to run the clock the rest of the season, so I don't have to worry about doing that anymore. However, one thing I'm not doing anymore is sitting right here. I'm sweating under the gun tonight, and Rick Keaton gets this thing back on Tuesday night, without a doubt. So, Rick, get better because it's yours at Gibbs on Tuesday night. And we're waiting on Jordan Jeffers to get up here. And Jordan Jeffers is still in the locker room, I think. So we'll take a note. Oh, here comes Jordan Jeffers. So we'll hang out here and catch Jordan when he gets up here. That's his team tonight with a win, 75-67 to 67, over the Halls Red Devils to probably, and they're going to have to beat Anderson County to do this, but this game tonight probably locks down second place or third place in the district for this Sky High team. And it doesn't really matter which order you put them in because either way you're going to be playing – Halls again in the district semifinals. Coach Jeffers, first time you played Halls, you went over two Halls, and it was a struggle throughout. Your team trailed by as much as 15 in the fourth quarter tonight. You never trailed against Halls. What was the difference? Uh oh, sorry about that. I, th I thought that uh, I thought we, you know, we, our focus was better from the start. I thought we did a much better job defensively, uh, keeping them out of the paint. We did a better job on 33. I don't know what he have. Uh, he had 10, but he only had that two in the second half. I think he had 27, you yes, know, at Halls. Uh, Schaefer had uh, – what Schaefer had? Schaefer ended up with 20 tonight. Yeah, which, I mean, and, and he's going to get – I mean, he shoots it really good. And we – you know, some of those are late. And, uh, you know, we're doing a, trying to switch and trying to, you know, end the game. But I thought we was just – I thought we was better defensively, you know. And uh, I thought we was more aggressive offensively. Uh, we got more downhill touches. I thought we was able to actually run some stuff. Um, which we've not been able to do really all year. Um, we've not had to a lot, uh, but tonight when we needed one, you know, we was able to run. We scored, uh, you know, I've all, I pride myself in our teams being able to score out of timeouts. And uh, I thought tonight, I don't know, maybe three or four times we scored after a timeout, big and one by Trey, you know, after at that side out. I mean, just I thought our guys did a better job executing. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was just proud with our effort and our, our focus you know, really not just tonight, but all week. I thought, you know, I thought our guys knew this game was a big game, and uh, I thought they prepared and treated it as such. The first time that you played Halls, they came out and really muscled your guys up defensively with their man defense, which yeah. they're really good at. And your guys never really adapted to it that well. But tonight, they looked really comfortable out there running their offense. Yeah, we we did. I thought we had some. We yeah, we had some silly turnovers early. Uh, I think we had seven or eight turnovers in the first half, and they were just all just. You know, just silly. We're just really just throwing it to them. I thought if you take away probably three or four turnovers that led to buckets for them in the first half, you know, I thought we could have just easily been up 18, uh, 16, 18, you know. Um, but, yeah, we handled it better. And uh, a lot of that is just, you know, that was game eight. This is game 22. Um, so, I mean, you know, we've played, you know, uh, we've played a lot of games. We're a little bit different team now than we were then. And, uh, you know, our guards are just, you know, our guards are doing a good job. I wish uh, I wish they wouldn't pick their dribble up. And, you know, I wish we'd handle the end of games a little bit better. I wish we'd handle the end of games like a like a mature senior veteran basketball team. 
Um, and, you know, and we don't. We didn't. We haven't yet. Got a little and, lackadaisical uh, there. You know, it's just so frustrating. And, you know, when everybody, oh, coach, well, you don't worry about it. You got to win. But, you know, we understand, <laughs> you know, that's why we lost to Clinton. You know what I mean? I mean, we was up 12 and start to fourth. And that's why, you know, it's just why we lose games like that. And, you know, it could have very easily, I mean, you give a play here and a play there, and you give us them, give them turnovers at the end of the game, and that thing becomes a dogfight at the end. And, and we just didn't finish well. We get lackadaisical, and we just start throwing the ball all over the gym. But. I thought we did handle their man. I thought we handled their switches better. We got some good matchups, and thought, I thought Trey was more assertive, um, more downhill, and uh, I thought Luke, same thing, Pruitt, same thing, and uh, I thought Braden Brummett played really well. Uh, we went and played a couple lineups there where we was basically all guards and uh, was able to move the ball. I thought the ball moved much better tonight uh, than it did over at Halls. Uh, so I mean, yeah. Overall, uh, I mean, I'm just I'm proud with our effort. I mean, I'm not going to allow the last minute and a half of that game to spoil how well we played for. We played really well for about 30 minutes tonight, and uh, I mean, I mean, we played. I thought we played really well. Uh, not as good as we can play, but I thought, you know, that's a that was a response that we needed. Uh, being at home and, uh, you know, with the with the second game of the, you know, rematch. You had some kids that stepped up big tonight. Luke West had 21 points. Gray Todd had 12, and I thought he was bigger than his 12 points. And yeah. you already talked about Braden Brumman. He had a really nice game as well. But I want to talk about Trey Morrow. I don't know if this was fair. Some people were saying back in December, Trey's in a slump. Now, I guarantee yeah. nobody on your coaching staff or in your locker room were saying that, but you hear that out in yeah. the community, right? And I don't know if that's right because he was still getting 25 points a game and nine or ten rebounds a game. But these last few games, there's no doubt. If Trey Morrow was ever in a slump, Trey Morrow is looking like he's in late season form right now. Yeah, I thought he looked more aggressive tonight. I thought he was more explosive. What do he have? How many? Thirty-four. Do you have? Yeah, and uh, you know he left some out there. Absolutely. Um, you know he's a. Uh, we we uh, you know when we when people said he was in a slump, we heard that same stuff. I mean, he scored 14 twice in a week. Uh, you know, Powell and uh, at Clinton. But, uh, you know, we didn't – we never thought – we just thought we weren't doing a good job executing offensively. And uh, people do a good job guarding him. I mean, hey, listen, they're allowed to put a scouting report together too and try to do a good job. And they've done a really good job. Uh, so then it's our job to do a good job countering. And uh, I feel like, you know, we've done been able to do some things offensively to give him some advantages. And, uh, you know, and also our other guys understanding that if people are not going to help off of Trey, then you have to get downhill off of Trey. Because um, that, you know, having the best player on the floor is an advantage, not a disadvantage. So, uh, you know, use it and get downhill and, uh, you know, try, drive his gaps because people's not going to leave him. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, tonight, man, he made a, he made a couple tough shots. But, I mean, he, everything he takes is, oh, I mean, he's, he's so unselfish. He made the right play. You know, Scott, you know, he made a couple unbelievable, you know, good passes to Scott. Scott just, you know, we missed some shots. Um, you know, he, you know he, he, he rarely shoots a questionable shot. And uh, you know, he just he plays as his own, at his own pace. And uh, you know, we wish sometimes he'd be more aggressive. But uh, man, he's a he's an unbelievable. He's you know, he's so he's good defensively tonight. I mean, he was you know, we we've challenged him on the defensive end really. When we when when people thought he was in a slump offensively, we thought he was being lazy defensively. Cause Trey is a stat stuffer. Uh, I mean, every every column he fills it up. So we uh, you know. We, we want him to be able to, you know, if, hey, okay, Trey, they're doing a good job guarding you in the half court. Go steal the ball. Go get a rebound. Get out in transition. Get a block, you know, whatever. And uh, he caused a lot of turnovers tonight. He did. I mean, he was all over the place. He, uh, he got, you know, I thought we, we was worried he was going to get a little foul trouble there early, but he did. A, him and Pruitt both did a really good job and thought the referees were really good tonight as far as, you know, we, I thought they were consistent and, uh, and letting some stuff go and then calling stuff. You know, I thought it, I just thought it was a uh, well-played game and thought it was, you know, well-refereed game. So you guys now are 17 and five. You're getting ready for a three-game road stretch. You're going to go to Gibbs. That's not a district game, but it is a region it's game. A region game, yeah. And then you got Anderson County. That's a really big game. Yeah. Then you got a long road trip up to Cosby, and I guarantee you that they were a little bit embarrassed by you guys on t- on Monday yeah. night. So they're going to be w- looking to put their best foot forward. If you take care of business in those three games, that gets you to 20 wins. Yeah. I know yeah. that's probably not the main thing. Every team loves to get to 20 wins. Yeah. But the main thing is building momentum ahead of that next home game against Clinton because that's a dandy. It's going to be a dandy, yeah, and it's I, a big one. I hope so. <laughs> we hope it's a dandy. <laughs> we hope it's a good game because uh, they're about a, they're, they're as good as anybody in the state. Um, now they got you know they got a piece of Fulton. You know everybody. Not, I mean Fulton's just a, you know they're just a different animal. Um, and I believe that Clinton can play with Fulton. I believe I believe we could play with Fulton. Uh, you know outside of a Christmas tournament game, but. You know, it is. It's an important time right here. We know everybody. You know, I think, you know, weatherman being Garrett says we're going to get snow. And uh, I, think, also, I think he was wrong. Are you really? He was wrong. 
it's, go. It's, well, maybe not as much. Okay, well, we're, just enough. At Tuesday, we'll be back and ready to go. And uh, go to yeah, games. that's what me and uh, the boys, co- you know, Coach Mead at Gibbs. I think we're going to be, you know, I, we talked about. It. I think you know, it's easier for us to travel out than it is probably for people to come in, especially from Knoxville. Um, so hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get to play on Tuesday. It's a region game. It's a big game. And Gibbs has been playing well. Uh, they've got a couple. Of win- they beat Northview, uh, played Halls, played this Halls team really well the other night at Halls, which you know was a really hard place to play. And, man, what about the crowd Halls brought tonight, though? Uh, man, that, the whole environment was cool. Me and Coach Sharp, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, Clint, he, was, uh, he said before the game, he said, man, this is just so cool of an environment. He said, we're not used to this. And uh, he said, when you all come to our place, he said, man, you all brought so many fans. It was so much fun. He said, that's the funnest game I've ever coached in. And uh, I said, well, then get ready for tonight then, big boy. Because, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just such a cool atmosphere, uh, you know, for, uh, for them too. I mean, because they brought – before when we were calling out uh, starting lineups, I kept hearing somebody say sucks when, uh, when they was calling out our starters. And I thought, man, they brought some kids. I mean, they had a, they had a three-row yeah, student, deep, section. St- student section. So, Man, just really fun, really cool environment. Our fans are as good as it gets. Their uh, cameraman was in here. We were in here about 4 o'clock, standing right yeah. here, and he, we were looking out over this gym, and, of course, it was empty then. And he said, think this will be full tonight? And I said, <laughs> Friday night? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, going to be full. Yeah. And he didn't believe me, I don't think. And uh, he said, man, that's going to be impressive. And, and so it is, it is impressive when this place fills up, and it fills up – Especially on Friday nights, but pretty yeah. much any time you got a district team in town, yeah. it's going to fill up. You know, and we've not always uh, – what we were talking about before the game, our, us as a team and as a program, since I've been, you know, the coach, we've not always handled that well. You know, it's hard. I mean, because you think, well, what a great, you know, home environment and what an advantage that is for the home team, and I think it is. But also, there it becomes like this, like like jitters or like juiced up. You get so much, like you know, just momentum. You you know, you get gassed. And uh, you know, I thought you know we've not always handled that well. Man, I thought we did a really good job handling that tonight. I thought you know our guys for for 32 minutes. I thought our effort was really good and pretty solid. And uh, you know, we got several guys that play 32 minutes, and uh, you know. I don't, you know, there's a little bit of give probably from the first minute to the 32nd minute, but uh, man, that, there's not much. I mean, they, they're getting, you know, Pruitt and Luke and Trey, them guys are laying it on the line and having a crowd here, you know, that that's like this, that's this electric. Uh, you know, I, I I think it helps some guys. It pulls us over the finish line, and uh, man, I, there ain't nowhere I'd rather be on a Friday night than in Highland or Gymnasium on a big district game. All right, Coach Jordan Jeffers, we'll let you go. Congratulations All on right, the win stay safe. Everybody get their, uh, get their milk and bread. <laughs> we'll see you at Gibbs <laughs> on Scott. Tuesday. All right, Coach Jordan Jeffers, his team tonight with a win over Halls as the Highlanders improve to 17-5 and five on the season, 2-2 two and two in district play. So that's going to do it for us tonight. For Sam Cron on the controls here, for Cameron Parker behind the camera, Greg Bond back at, uh, what do we call it, Studio Central. Uh, Rick Keaton, we hope you get better soon. We'll see you on Tuesday night over at Gibbs. Until then, thank you for listening and watching, and have a great night.